Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Emi Chicken of Team Pandori. Today, we will demonstrate how to get your steering wheel set up with Batacera. This guide assumes that you have all the ROMs ready and you want to go and buy a driving controller. So, let's get cracking. So the first question is which driving controller should you get? For Batacera, we recommend you do not get a force feedback wheel. You'll be fighting the cogs rather than playing the game. So these Logitech ones, nah. A wheel with a bungee or a spring system like this is ideal. This one in particular is very cheap, but it only uses the suckers to stay on the desk. This one's a bit of a toy. If you fancy something a bit more substantial, this PXN V9 is pretty decent. This one works with Batacera, but not with Emuelec, but it's good with Truck Simulator. Our recommendation is the Hori Apex Ra. This one uses a bungee, and this one's marketed to be used with a PlayStation 3 or 4. All the buttons on the front can be used like a PlayStation pad, and the wheel itself turns 270 degrees. We can change sensitivity on the fly, as well as rebind buttons just by using the wheel itself. And it's both compatible with Emuelec and Batacera, so it's a pretty decent wheel indeed. The first thing we need to do in Batacera is to configure the controller. Press circle, X, triangle, then square. For start and select, I'll use option and share. And for the directions, we need to check on the top of the steering wheel, the set to DP, then push up, down, left, right, L1, R1. On the top again, we're gonna click this switch over to LS, which means left analog stick, up, left. Now switch it over to RS, and then do the same again. Then the rest of the L buttons, and for hotkey, I'm gonna use home. Now press OK, now we should be good to play. We'll first start with Outrun in Final Burn Neo. So let's first see if we need to change any options. Both accelerate and steering is okay. Left paddle is brake. And to change gear, we need to use circle. Outside that, it is pretty playable. So what we'll do is reassign the gear button using our quick menu. So hold hotkey and then press X. From here, we're gonna go down to controls. Then, port 1 controls. These are all the controls we have assigned to our steering wheel. So we want to assign the gear to our right paddle. If you pull it now, it breaks. So checking the options here, our right paddle is either square or L2. After playing with the options, we found that the square button is assigned to the right paddle. Change this to gear, then press X a few times, and we can try again. If you want to change any more settings, we go back into the option screen. But as is, this seems to be working pretty decent. To save the settings for this game, we go into the quick menu, manage remap files, then save game remap file. So the next time we load up this game, it'll work straight away for our wheel. Let's try another game in Final Burn Neo. This one's Chase HQ. We can repeat the process. The reason why we use FB Neo rather than MAME is because they're a lot easier to reconfigure. This game is a bit different to the last, as we can't move the car without reconfiguring. At least not with the foot pedal. Currently, Accelerate is set to left paddle or X. We can rebind these on the wheel itself, but that'd change it for other games too. If we pull the right shifter, it uses the nitro. We'll push the other buttons to find out which one it is. Okay, so the right paddle is square and the left paddle is X. So go into the menu again, hotkey and X. Go down to controls. Port 1 controls. Now we can find the X button, which is used to accelerate. We'll change that one to turbo. I like having gear on the right, so I'll change square to gear. We'll also need to accelerate, as our wheel is on PlayStation 3 mode. That'll mean our right foot pedal is set to R2. So let's change this one to accelerate and L2 to brake. Now let's get back to the game and test it. So yeah, that's our steering wheel setup, but I want to improve the sensitivity of our inputs. We can do this by going to our menu, settings, input, where we can change sensitivity as well as dead zone. So you can raise this a little, And yes, it is a bit more sensitive. We can alter for taste. 
And then to save this setting, we need to go down to Options, Manage Core Options, and then Save Game Options. That'll save the previous options only for this game alone. For the buttons, don't forget to save Remap File. Then we should be good for the next time we play. If you wanted to set the MAME game up, the process is very similar. But the issue with MAME is there are hundreds of versions with varying amounts of success when configuring your controller. You may need to use a keyboard and the tab key to see this interface here, and it's very messy in comparison to RetroArch. If you do need to use MAME, we recommend using the latest ROM set. To unmap the binds that are already set, we highlight one and then push the delete key. As we're using a wheel, we can remove all of these, and it'll still work. It is ultra sensitive though. If we go into analog controls, we can alter that. Or we'll lower this setting here. You can toggle dial reverse if your steering wheel is going the wrong direction. Previous menu, then press tab. We can try it out. Okay, we do need a bit more sensitivity, but yeah, you know how to do it now. Next up, Road Blaster. This one's a laser disc game, and we're using the Hipsis core. We have no access to the quick menu like earlier. We need to rebind by only using the wheel controller. Coin in and start works fine, as does the steering. But to accelerate, we need to use a triangle, and for brake, we need to use X. So to rebind it using this controller, we need to hold a sign. When the light comes up, we push the accelerator pedal, and then triangle. Then we can do the same for brake. Hold a sign, brake pedal, and then X. And now we can somewhat play this game. If you have a different wheel controller, please check its manual. Next up is Daytona USA for the Sega Saturn. If we check in the options, we know that this game sees our wheel as a control pad. So I'll go back into our quick menu, it's hotkey and X, and we'll go down to the controls. Port 1 controls, and in device type we'll change this to Arcade Racer. The steering wheel now works in game, but this R1 button is gas. So we're going to hold the button in the middle, push the accelerator pedal, and then push R1. We could do this with the other buttons too, as well as use the quick menu. Or just check how bad I am at this game. For Crazy Taxi on the Dreamcast, the steering wheel and pedals work fine out of the box. I'll just reassign the paddles, this one's an accelerate gear, and left paddle will be X, to reverse. So moving on to a Thomas Wave, this one is maximum speed. The steering works, but the pedals don't. So what we'll do is reset this to default, just hold down the assign button, when you see a green light, push the PS button. And now the accelerator and the brake work fine. Push start to against the game, and the shifters are incorrectly configured. So like before, go into the quick menu, controls, port one controls. Remember X and Y are for our paddles, so we'll change this for low shift and high shift. We can then go back and save the remap, save it to the game, and we should be gravy. Next up is Daytona USA for the Model 2. For this game we cannot use the quick menu, so we'll use this keyboard and mouse. For this game we did have to change mode to PS4, but let's see what we need to reconfigure. So right now I'm not quite happy with the gear shifter, so with the keyboard we'll press Alt and Enter. This toggles full screen mode, then Alt and Tab to make sure Daytona USA is in focus. Now Alt and G to get the game menu up, and then enter to get into configure controls. Now the awkward thing about this menu is we cannot see the mouse pointer. So we push Alt and Tab to make sure it's in focus again. And using the trackpad, we go to the very top left of the screen, and then move down and right a little, and then click. Unfortunately, this is all done by feeling, but to change one of these items, you need to double click it. So for accelerate, we can change the axis used, or even invert it. You should be able to see the value change as you push your pedal down. If not, you've got to change the axis. You can navigate this menu by using Tab and the spacebar. Once you're finished, go to the OK and you should be golden. But as I mentioned earlier, I want to change the buttons for gear shift. This is a pain in the backside, but we need to double click on each gear and then bind it to a button on our controller. Once we're done, push Tab a few times until Close is highlighted and then push Enter. Again, we need to shift focus to Daytona USA, Alt and Tab and then to put it into full screen mode, Alt and Enter. Give it a few seconds. 
And then you can play. Remember, you can rebind like we did earlier by only using the wheel controls. Next up is Model 3. Hold the circle button so you see this game menu, Advanced Game Options, then go down to Modern Pedal Controls. Set this to On, then go test out your game. Very similar to the previous game, the gears are all over the place. But rather than change the controls in the emulators, let's just rebind it using the steering wheel. First we find the buttons that change the gears, and then rebind. Perfect. Next up, the N64. Go to the N64 menu, then select a LibRetro Core so it can change control settings in RetroArch. Then start up the game. Oh dear. After pushing a few buttons, the left shifter works as Accelerate, and we can handle fairly easily. So same again, hotkey X, go down to controls, Port 1 controls. Now if we think back, we had an X as the left shifter. And here it is, assigned as the A button, which is Accelerate. If we move down to R2, which is our Accelerator pedal, we can change this to A button. As for the Brake pedal, let's change this to Boost. This should be the B button. Okay, so Accelerate works. Then after the first lap, we can confirm that the booster works. As for the paddle shifters, let's change these for air brake left and right. So now we need X and square to be changed for R shoulder and Z trigger. Should look something like this. You can save the bind, and this game is pretty fun with a wheel controller. Next we'll move to the PlayStation. This game's Ridge Racer Type 4, and very similar to the Sega Saturn, we're going to check the options to find that our wheel's been seen as a normal control pad. So we're going to hit up the menu again. Let's go all the way down to controls. Port 1 controls. Then change device type to Negcon. This is the Namco driving controller we've had earlier on this channel. We can also set the analog to digital type to none. And then let's return back to the game. From here we'll exit this controller setup. And then we'll go back in. Now we can see that this wheel is seen as a Netcon, we can go back into the game. So this is working, but to change gear, we need to use the D-pad, up and down. As we want to use the panel shifters to do this, we need to go back into the menu to rebind the paddles, back into port 1 controls, and then the X and square buttons need to be changed to D-pad up and D-pad down. And then we're good to go. Last up is one of my favourite games, Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast on the PSP. Changing controls here is slightly different, but first you should create game config. Go into settings, then controls, control mapping. I know in this game if you push X it accelerates, so push this plus here and then pump the gas pedal. This game uses square for brake, so we're going to press this plus here, then push the brake pedal. Now to test it in game. Okay the pedals work, and now for the gears. After pushing a few buttons, we find that L1 and R1 are changing gear. So we could change that in the option screen, or on the wheel itself. Hold the sign, pull this paddle, and then R1. We can do the same for the left paddle. Now we can play Outrun with a wheel. God damn it. As I totally fail at Outrun, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Thanks to you, we can keep pushing out content such as video guides, reviews, and then continuing work on our Pandora project. If you'd like to support our work, please join the Patreon, or you can like and subscribe. This has been Imi Chicken of Team Pandora, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra. Sorry. Can't miss the boss.